It was St. John the Baptist who first proclaimed, Behold, the Lamb of God. It is Holy Mother Church who joins his words to the Eucharist during the final elevation at Mass. The wisdom of the Church in doing so is sublime. It is truly a call to contemplation. Brothers and sisters, welcome back to Contemplata, a podcast for contemplative souls. Let me tell you a story. It was the evening of August 21, 1879. In the little village of Knock in Western Ireland, a group of more than 20 people stood in the midst of a heavy downpour. They were witnessing a vision of heavenly figures appearing on the gable wall of St. John the Baptist Church. The figures in the vision were made of light and spoke no words. They simply held their posture fixed in place. As people looked on, some went to tell others. Some remained in prayer. Some tried to touch the figures and the apparition. The attempt to touch the figures proved futile. Hands simply passed through light to feel the stone wall of the church. The witnesses were later examined by ecclesiastical authorities and declared trustworthy, and the witnesses offer a common description of what they saw. On the far left was St. Joseph, with hands folded in prayer. Next to him was Our Lady, wearing a crown of gold, her eyes and hands lifted upwards to heaven in prayer. Next to her was St. John the Evangelist, wearing something like a bishop's mitre. His one hand was holding a book of the Gospels. His other hand was lifted up as though preaching. Next to St. John, however, was the central and brightest figure in the whole scene. On a raised altar, there was a bright white lamb standing upright, head lifted high. Above the lamb was a radiant cross. The altar, the lamb, and the cross were surrounded by luminous angels. The vision lasted about two hours. It is commonly called a Marian apparition, and that is part of the truth. Our Lady did appear there. But much more importantly, the event was a Eucharistic apparition. It was a vision of the Lamb of God. Recently, I made a pilgrimage to Knock. Over the very place where the apparition took place, against the same gable wall of the same church, one now finds the apparition chapel. The chapel has large white statues of each figure, each carved in stone according to the instructions of one of the original eyewitnesses. They are all arranged in place to replicate the vision. The focal point is the lamb. The lamb stands upright on an altar fastened high on the wall. But on the ground below stands another altar for the celebration of mass and adoration. When I first arrived, I entered the apparition chapel during Eucharistic adoration. I was tired from travel, yet overjoyed to arrive. I sat down directly in the center of the chapel to take in the awesome sight of the white figure of the Lamb on the elevated altar. I pondered how wonderful it must have been for the visionaries actually to see the Lamb made of light, wholly luminous. How wonderful it must have been for them to catch a glimpse into heaven like St. John of old on the Isle of Patmos. Gradually, however, my eyes descended from the white statue of the Lamb and fell upon the host and the monstrance beneath it. At that moment, looking now at the consecrated host, something like thunder clapped in my soul. Instantly, I realized how every day of my life as a priest, I take into my hands the actual Lamb of God. I lift him up before the people, and I say, Behold, the Lamb of God. The people see neither a luminous figure of the Lamb nor a stone replica, 
but the actual Lamb of God in my hands. I asked myself, how many times have I lifted up the Lamb without really realizing what I was doing or saying? In that moment, in the light of grace, I realized what a great thing it is for anyone to behold the Lamb of God even once during the final elevation at Mass. It is a far greater thing than the most extraordinary of mystical visions. It was St. John the Baptist who first proclaimed, Behold, the Lamb of God. It is Holy Mother Church who joins his words to the Eucharist during the final elevation at Mass. The wisdom of the Church in doing so is sublime. It is truly a call to contemplation. A good mother points things out to her children. She tells them what they're seeing so that her children might look and learn the world. Look, a mother says to her children, a blue jay. Similarly, Holy Mother Church holds up the Eucharist and says, behold, the Lamb of God. The sight of the Eucharist and the meaning of the words are far too much for anyone to take in all at once. It deserves more extended contemplation. In order to capture the wisdom of the moment, in order to linger in the light of the immense truth in the elevation, the practice of Eucharistic adoration has gradually developed in the Church. Eucharistic adoration is basically a prolongation of the moment of the elevation at Mass, but it is a prolongation of that moment outside of Mass so that you and I might linger in amazement and wonder at what is before us. Eucharistic adoration is essentially a sustained beholding of the Lamb of God. It is the perfect response to St. John the Baptist's prophetic command, metanoiete, mind your God. Brothers and sisters, all of the teachings and all of the practices of the Holy Catholic Church are given to the world to recover the eyes of the heart from the calamity of the fall. God has given us the eyes of our hearts so that we might behold supernatural mysteries coming down to us from the Father of lights, and ultimately, so that we might see Him, God. In the beginning, when God created the first human beings, the eyes of their hearts were specially illuminated by grace. Thanks to the light of grace, they knew the presence of God very personally. They sensed the presence of God dwelling in their hearts. They could even, in a way, see God shining out in the world of nature in a special way. But alas, Adam and Eve fell from grace. And as a result, the eyes of our hearts now stand in need of recovery. We need healing from our blindness to the presence of God. Thanks be to God, he has given us his Son, Jesus Christ, and the grace of the Holy Spirit to heal and illuminate the eyes of our hearts. The point is so that you and I might learn to contemplate the world anew in light of God. Eucharistic adoration is a school of contemplation. It is a simple way for busy people to let go of their busyness, to step back from the rat race that our lives have become, and to recenter on what really matters in life. What really matters is God. In Eucharistic adoration, the Lamb of God is silent, but his silence speaks louder than words. From the silence of the monstrance, the Lamb speaks to the heart. He tells of a love beyond all telling. He tells of the love that drove him to the cross, to the tomb, and to the third day resurrection. Slowly, with practice, beholding the Lamb of God grows into beholding the heart which has so loved men. In the vision at Nock, they say, the Lamb was the brightest figure of them all. 
Do you too want to see the luminous lamb? Seek him in a monstrance near you. There you will find him before your very eyes. Thank you for listening to this episode of Contemplata. Be sure to like and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you.